to develop dream awareness, you have to awaken from your dreams. And if, if I think the usual idea of what a good night's sleep is, you go to sleep, you wake up, and nothing happened in between. That means you forgot all those dreams. But if you want to cultivate your awareness of dreams, Well, I, I would not want to say that uh, a person with some kind of psychopathologic problem would not have some difficulties with lucid dreaming because that same person is going to have problems with being in a seminar, being in any, in any social situation, right? And, and so some people will get into trouble in any situation. But I know of no specific difficulties arising from lucid dreaming, especially if you compare it with its alternative, which is non-lucid dreaming. People can be very frightened by dreams, yes? Sometimes people are in lucid dreams and then they say, ah, this, something's wrong, I'm stuck in another world, and, and they get frightened. Yeah, but that's normally a failure of lucidity. And the fact that people may be frightened by those experiences is no worse than the fact that they're frightened all the time by nightmares. Uh, we have received on the order of 20 or 30,000 letters from people. Maybe three or four have spoken of finding lucid dreaming unpleasant. Uh, usually because um, they feel their lives are too busy. There's too much happening all night long. And, and it can be confusing then. You know? But uh, I have found for people like that, who have very vivid dream recall and, and have a lot of lucid dreams, what they need is they need some training about how they can use that beneficially. And that once they know how to do it, then they find it is a great talent, a benefit. <coughs> Yes. Uh, well, there's a, there already is another version of it that Vladimir is about to get a prototype of by any day now <laughs> that lets you connect one of these devices to a personal computer. This lets you do things like say, I want it to wake me up at a certain hour of the night. Uh, and should change on a computer screen many parameters that you can't change in the NOVA very easily. And also to keep track of your results. Uh, one of the ways of, in learning to use this device, you have to find out what is the right brightness for you, for example. So this, for example, is uh, the dimmest setting for a light sleeper. And then the, here's the next one. This, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, that, that was actually the, <coughs> the flexible mode. The adjustable mode. Here is the light sleeper, just four dim flashes. And here is the next for medium sleeper. And this for deep sleep. Ah, absolutely. Uh, for me, to try to use this in this weather, forget it. What I do at home, if it's on the warm side, I have a fan right next to my bed, blowing on me. Then it's okay. Otherwise, I agree with you, it gets too hot. Uh, we may be doing that in the future. Uh, we're working on a new version of the device that will uh, have a computer interface that will probably use infrared. But, but what that usually means is as you're falling asleep or having awakened, right? No, it's a different like somebody began to move. 
Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, and, and that's why what we recommend that people do is every time that they find themselves awake, to push the button once. Because, uh, yes, it can, if you move your head, that may be enough to determine that you're dreaming. But that was the wrong, because it's an eye movement. I'm, I'm hoping that in the next version we'll be able to discriminate better between the eye movements that are made with a body movement and while you're awake, blinks, Compared to REM sleep, because we understand your point that that is a, a deficiency that the device could work better than that. Yes, that is exactly what we're planning for our next version, is be able to make an eye movement signal that will tell the device that you... Uh, the wonders of the East. Um, however, I doubt it in this case. Uh, this, um, people often ask me a question. They say, why can't you videotape people's dreams? And I uh, ask them, well, I don't know uh, why not exactly, but how? It, the, uh, this is something that I believe is scientifically possible, but not with our current technology. In years to come, when we have much better abilities to determine the exact pattern of brain activity, it's entirely reasonable to expect that it will be possible to have computers that will interpret that brain activity as a picture of what the person was experiencing. But we're a long way from that today, even in Japan. <laughs> So, uh, well, then all I can ask you is to send me the information so I can read it. And a paranormal explanation. I, I'll just say that as for the paranormal explanation, who knows? But, but one normal explanation that comes to mind is before that, sometime in the middle of the night, you got out of bed in your sleep and did it. But, but what I'm saying is, is, so in the morning you have a dream that there's something in your hand, and then it turns out that there is. Yes. But to be sure that there, that I don't know how often this happens. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Um, well, uh, if you're if you can be confident that the explanation that you didn't get up in the night and do this and then have a dream that it was there and so on, that when well, I said there was a normal explanation, that's what that would be. But I also said at the beginning that may not be the explanation. But it might be hard to be certain that that was not the explanation because most people don't sleep while they're being videotaped so that you know whether they got out of bed. And the problem is that people don't remember what they did normally when they are sleepwalking. They have no recollection at all. And that's why that you could conceivably have done something like that and have no recollection at all except for where did this come from?